Now let's focus on an example of single dwell cam design. The cam profile in this case is going to be rise fall dwell. And so by that's just one dwell, so therefore the term single dwell design. So we're going to have a rise followed by an immediate fall, no dwell in between, and then a dwell at the end before we cycle back around. We're going to use the same approach as we did previously for the double dwell, which was a rise dwell, fall dwell. Previously for that design, we used a modified trapezoidal. However, in this particular case, we're going to use a cycloidal profile, also part of the SCCA family of curves. However, starting off, I'm going to warn you that our result may not be optimal. Here we see our result. Let me zoom in a little bit. We see our position. It does indeed start at zero, rise, and do an immediate fall before it dwells and begins again. We see our velocity curve. We see our acceleration curve. But notice this here, we come back to zero and then we go negative again before coming back and dwelling. Notice our peak acceleration is 573 inches per second. This is kind of a weird thing to happen with our acceleration because our acceleration is remaining negative. It makes you wonder why it was necessary to come to zero and then to come back down again. Um, and you can see that because of this, we end up with a discontinuity here in our jerk profile. So it's not an optimal um, set of results um, for this particular design, mainly because of what we see here with the acceleration. So instead, we're going to try a double harmonic. Um, it's important that we state here that the only reason to return acceleration to zero is to either change its sign or to match an adjacent segment that has zero acceleration. Neither was true in this case. And so again, let's go back and look at that acceleration curve. The only reason to move an acceleration to zero is either because we want to change its sign, which means it's gonna, it was negative before and then it's going to go positive. But in this case, that wasn't true because it was negative and it stayed negative. Or to match a, a, um, a segment, an adjacent segment, that has zero acceleration. For example, here, we matched, we came to zero because we were about to be dwelling. But in this case, we're not dwelling. We're simply, we rose and now we're about to fall again. So again, we didn't cross the, the axis, so we weren't going from negative to positive or from positive to negative. And we also weren't dwelling yet, so there was really no reason to bring us back to zero. So why did this occur? Well, mainly this occurred because of the nature of the SCCA family. They're really built or designed for double dwell applications. On a double dwell, after this rise, there would be a dwell here, in which case the acceleration would want to come to zero. However, in this case, for a single dwell application, it's not a good idea to use one of the curves from the SCCA family. So instead, we're going to try a double harmonic. Um, this is two cosine curves of different frequency. We'll start off by noting that the double harmonic curves have a non-zero acceleration at one end. So while they're good for the current case, they can't be used for a double dwell design, as the SCCA family can be. Also, they can only be used when the rise and fall times are equal. That means there's a symmetry. In this particular case, there is, I don't, is there? Let's see. In this particular case, where we have a rise in 90 and a fall in 90, this is a good case to use a double harmonic because we do have symmetry in our rise and our fall. Here we see the rise and fall equations for the double harmonics, position, velocity, acceleration, jerk. And again here, and I know these aren't so easy to see, position for the fall, velocity for the fall, acceleration for the fall, and jerk for the fall. So these are our equations. Again, equations like these, I'm again zooming in on the rise equations. You do not need to memorize these. If we use these, these equations would be typed into a program um, like a program application like MATLAB. So rise equations, fall equations, and this is our result. 
this result is somewhat better due to no um, acceleration returning to zero. And so here, if we look at these curves, we'll see our position rises and it falls and then it dwells. We see our velocity, we have the little weird thing that happened there in the, uh, in the previous case. Our acceleration stays negative. It does not come back to zero and pop back down. And because of that, we have a continuous jerk function. However, if we zoom in on that acceleration, what we'll see then is that our maximum acceleration in this case is negative 900 inches per second. That's our maximum magnitude of our acceleration. And that's nearly twice what we saw before. So if we go back to what we had before in our result and we zoom in on that acceleration, we see that acceleration maximum was 573 and negative 573. So we've almost doubled our maximum acceleration using um, our double harmonic. So while this is okay as a design, um, the acceleration is nearly twice what it was in the cycloidal. What we'll do next time is we will consider a polynomial which will give us a smooth function and lower our, our maximum acceleration.